Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, my name is Keisha. I blog every day at kjaggers.com. The link to that is below. And I am in my kitchen today doing a question and answer video of questions you wanted to ask me regarding the kitchen. So a lot of them came in. I just kind of wrote them down as they came in. I asked via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on my video that I put up asking you guys what you guys wanted to know. So I got a bunch of questions. We're going to try to get through them um, as fast as I can. I do have some stuff laid out that I'm going to show you, you know, during this video. What did you like best about going to culinary school? So that's real easy. That was eating. I so love trying new and, and interesting foods. I I think that was the first place I tried calamari and it was the first place that I even tried tilapia because I hated fish and we made it in class and it was delicious. And I went to Sullivan in Louisville, Kentucky to culinary school. I got my associate's degree first in paralegal studies and then I got a certificate in baking and pastry, which I had to take cooking classes for too. And then I finished up with a bachelor's um, in business management. So I really loved the, the eating. It was amazing and school always smelled so good. Next question is kind of like a group question. It was about cast iron skillets. So I got a bunch of questions in about cast irons and um, quite a few of them were about the cast iron skillets being expensive, where do you find them cheap, and how do you take care of them. So kind of like a group question with two parts. So to be very, very honest, I have not bought a cast iron skillet in a very long time. They've been passed down in my family. and. You know, I think it's worth the investment. I saw some at Walmart for like $30. And I know that a Paula Deen cast iron skillet was like 40 at Walmart for a lifetime pan. Because if you take care of these properly, they will be a lifetime skillet or whatever cast iron product you're buying. Because they make them in like Dutch ovens, all kinds of stuff. Um they will last forever. In terms of how do I care for a cast iron pan, um, it's very technical, to be honest. Um, washing them, um, seasoning them in the oven, and I'm gonna do a whole video on that, so I hope you guys don't mind um, that I'm not gonna show that in this video because I wanna be very thorough in showing you how to care for a cast iron pan. But, I would say like Walmart, check them um, for a pan, check Amazon for cast iron, um, and you, I'm sure you can find some pretty decent deals on them, but don't be, you know, surprised. Some of the, the large skillets are pretty pricey, and um, to me, it's worth the sacrifice. I would just bite the bullet um, and get one for my kitchen, I think. Pretty much most houses or families need a cast iron pan. They they distribute the heat evenly. They cook really well. They can be used on the grill outside gas or charcoal. And you're right, they're not cheap. But the cheapest place I have personally found them is Walmart. And if you found them anywhere cheaper and you're watching this video, please leave a comment so other people know where to find them. But again, mine which I have three total, have been passed down through my family. So, you know, I talk to your grandmothers. Maybe they have a cast iron pan or your mom that they can kind of pass down to you and keep within your family. The next question is another group question. So many of you guys wanted to know how I sharpen my knives. So, you know, we had to learn all about this in culinary school, and there's lots of ways. Um, you could definitely use, like, a wet stone. I hate that method. I don't use it. You could use one of these, and this is like a rod, and you just take your knife at an edge and come down, just like that. This came with my knife set. Not this is a different knife from the set, but this works just fine. Go on each side of the blade all the way down. And maybe I'll do a whole video about this. But my favorite one 
um, is the Smith's knife sharpener. This is what it looks like. It has measurements on the back and you open it up. You've got coarse and fine and you even got a place for scissors. I believe I found this at Walmart, but I'll have links on my blog of where you can find it. So, of course, it's like your um, serrated knives, and fine is for just a straight blade. So I'm just going to kind of hold it. So you put it on the counter, and you hold it, and then you just run your knife through it. And it really does sharpen your knives well. I've had this for a very long time. Makes the job easy. You're not going to hurt your blades. And you know, you guys, a dull knife in the kitchen will give you so much more work. And I think it's important. Usually, before I go cutting any meat or sometimes vegetables, I will sharpen my knife really fast. It takes like two minutes and it's completely sharp. And cuts like a dream but one thing you do have to remember is to keep your fingers back and use your thumb to help guide you it's kind of hard to see i'm not a lefty and let the knife do the work you don't have to put too much effort into it especially with a sharp blade and again this has been a lifesaver this is the smith's knife sharpener and i'll have the link on my blog hopefully where you can find this. Um, I haven't looked any of them up. This also works fine too. This is better than a whetstone to me. You just take the blade down and the more you practice, the better you will get it. Some people can do this really fast. Each side, like from bottom up. See? So, that's how I sharpen my knives, but I use the Smiths 90% of the time. Basics for starting out or starting over. What are the basic items you will need and where to find them um, for a good price? The first thing I think any young person should have or anybody just starting over is a very decent pot and pan set. So these are the Rachel Ray um, set and you can see, sorry about the noise, they have the orange handles and what I would say is invest as much as you can within your budget on pots and pans. Now, if you have a very small budget, buy one pan at a time. Start out with um, one skillet and one pot and build up as you go. But I recommend buying a set just to have because, it, you know, a good set of pots and pans really are amazing to have in your kitchen. Otherwise, if you buy the really, really cheap stuff, the Teflon's will liable to come off in your food. Um, you're gonna burn your food more. And I would just say invest in a nice set of pans. I would also say for like utensils and different things like spatulas and things that you're gonna use in your kitchen, go to the Dollar Tree. Um, you can find so much. They have the Betty Crocker stuff. Um, and you can find these for about a dollar a piece and so much more there too. I would just go there and look and get the stuff that you're going to use or maybe you'd like to try for just a dollar a piece, which is fabulous. Um, of course, I think you need a toaster. Mine's right back there. Um, and I'm trying to coffee pot. Um, if you drink coffee and just build up over time. The Dollar Tree is a wonderful place for teenagers or young adults starting out or even older adults who value a penny a little bit more, most likely. And get a few things to try. Now, I don't recommend getting their pots and pans, but if that's what you can afford and that's better than nothing, get it. Um, I would start out with essentials that would be like a hand mixer. That's very important, at least in my house. But if you don't want to spend the big bucks on a hand mixer, and I don't know where it went, it's probably in my dishwasher, um, a potato masher works amazingly. You can do so much with a potato masher, and you don't have to um, buy a hand mixer if you don't already have one. So... Try to find things that are very practical to the way you cook. If you don't cook often, you're not gonna need a 
kitchen full of stuff you're never going to use. But if you are somebody who's wanting to cook more, definitely, definitely check out the Dollar Tree um, because it's so inexpensive and you can find so much there. My favorite utensils. Okay, so um, wooden spoons are important in my family, in my house. I use these a lot. Again, these have been passed down. These are pretty old. You can see by the way they look, but they still work wonderfully. And we use them pretty much every day. Pizza cutter. Pizza cutter is important in my family. We cut pizza and dough and all kinds of stuff with a pizza cutter. It just works for all kinds of things. This hand juicer that opens up and you put your lemon or your orange or your lime in and then you squeeze it and the juice comes from the holes is such a lifesaver. I have very weak hands and as I'm getting older, they're getting worse and this just makes it so much easier just to juice a lemon or a lime for a recipe and I wouldn't live without this. I love it. Another thing that I absolutely love is the spider. You can find this, I think, like in kitchen stores. I found this in a specialty kitchen store. I'm not sure if I've seen it at Walmart, but again, if I can find it, the link will be on my blog. They're very inexpensive. They are so good for so many things. My kids use them to scoop out ramen noodles sometimes. They're, they're really made for frying, so it's got a long handle and you can get the... Uh, food into the oil and out of the oil without burning yourself. It's great when you're um, like shocking vegetables and you want to pull the vegetables out of the hot water and put them into ice water and then pull them back out. This works so nice. I love this and I really think if you can find one you will love it too. My hand mixer and I don't have it out. You guys know that. My potato masher. Both things are very handy. My kitchen aid mixer is another, I have two, is another essential in my house because I do a lot of baking. Um, I also love a cake platter with a dome because um, people can see the yummy treats inside and help themselves while it stays fresh. Um, my teapot, which I'll show you in just a minute. I'm trying to look around and think, but yeah, my essentials are pretty simple. Um, a good knife set is very important. This is just a separate knife that I love. This is the Cook's Essential 5.5 Katuto, I can't say it, knife, and it's just a beautiful knife and I've used forever. Also, when buying knives, make sure it's not too heavy for your hands. Some knives are, you know, pretty heavy. All right, so... Um, another question is how to remove buildup on your cabinets. So I don't have buildup on my cabinets because I clean them often, but I would start out with a magic eraser and see how that works on your cabinets. It's worked wonderfully throughout my entire house, but if that doesn't work, I would suggest using one part um, vegetable oil and like one tablespoon and two tablespoons of baking soda. Mix it up. Put it on the cabinets and scrub, scrub, scrub. It should come off just fine. How do I get my son to try new foods? Um, good luck. I have a picky eater also. And the way I trick them most of the time is, let me put my shirt up, sorry, is um, I make something new and I basically lie. I'm like, you've tried it before and you loved it. And my my kids usually go for it. I pray they're not watching this video. Um, but that's usually what I would do. I make it and, and I like fool them. Well, you've had it before, you loved it. And usually that helps. They're more eager to try it because they thought they already tried it. Um, another thing that we did with Jackson in younger years was one night a week, we made a meal that was new to our family. It was new to Scott, it was new to me, it was new to Jackson. And that one time a week, we all tried something new together. And it was like mandatory. Um, it helped quite a bit too. Another thing that I think, sorry as a kitty cat, most parents get hung up on is their children's not eating enough, their children's not eating healthy enough. The truth is, the kids aren't gonna starve. They will show up when they're hungry. I mean, I make dinner mandatory. But 
if they don't eat everything on their plate, that's okay. Just let them be. Um, put out healthy options that they can choose from. Make a snack drawer in your refrigerator, which I have shown on this channel, um, just for your little ones with fresh fruits and vegetables, but getting them to try new things, like I said, I just fool them, and then we did the one night a week where we all tried something new, and it wasn't that complicated. It could have been um, chicken tacos with, um, I don't know, some type of new sauce, and pot roast with out the potatoes in it so it was still regular meals but we switched it up because that's what we're supposed to do and then some things were new like fish night and um it was a great way to get him to try new things and even while he sat there and tested dinner sometimes he had to try it he had to take at least one or two bites and give it a really good effort most of the time, it worked out perfectly. He ate the entire dinner. And also, while I make their dinners, I um, I put fruit and um, things that sometimes people forget to put on plates, like segments of oranges or a fruit salad. Or um, sometimes I even have put dessert first. Because how many nights have went around in your life that maybe, you know, a piece of chocolate cake and a glass of milk for dinner was perfect sometimes that's okay for the kids too you gotta let kids be kids i'm not gonna take all the sugar away from my child but some nights i would give in and let him have something more that he you know enjoyed as have i it doesn't happen every night but every once in a while that's okay how do i store and portion food out better um i did a video i don't know if it was a vlog channel or this channel i'll link it below but i bring home like like the like a big bag of ruffles and I portion that out in little snack bags just like this size and they go into a container a little bin in our pantry and that portions the food out the same with fruit you could do it you could do it with so many things think about portioning out your cereal and putting it in baggies um, all those things make your morning run easier, or your life, that is, um, with portioned out snacks. So I just portion them out the day I buy them. Like Sunday is my grocery day. So I try, it's usually late in the afternoon sometimes, but I bring, I go shopping, I bring home the groceries, I make a haul usually, and then I put up the frozen stuff and the cold stuff. And I put everything up except the snacks that need to be portioned out. And I sit down and take the time to do it. Makes things last longer. Um, otherwise, like Jackson will grab a whole bag of chips, disappear upstairs with them, and then come back with a completely empty bag and not hungry at all. It's really nice to have portion control, especially with children. And if you're watching your weight, that's another thing to do um, to help even more. Let's see favorite meal to cook that's a hard one that really is um favorite meal to cook to actually cook um i'm a pasta girl and i would say some kind of pasta would probably be my favorite it's usually a faster kind of dinner you can usually make quite a few different pasta meals in under 15 to 20 minutes i would say something with pasta Where did you get your round measuring bowls? So this is what they're talking about. These bowls are amazing. Um, these were a gift from my mom. So this is one cup. This is three-fourths of a cup. This is one and a half cups, one-fourth of a cup, and one-eighth of a cup. They all fit inside of each other, and these came from the Food Network. So again, if I can find the link to these, they will be on my blog and you can order yourself a set. They are amazing. I use them so much. I would actually like, I might actually get some, I'd like two or three sets. So if I'm showing a recipe, I have plenty of different sizes. So I love those. They were a gift. My mom found them, I think, on the Food Network because that's the kind of um, cups they are. They came from there. Favorite cookbook of all time? <sighs> Julia Child, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. One of my absolute favorites. 
Again, if you're looking for this book, I will link it um, on my blog post. This book has, you can see, where I've done some different recipes. This book is written so beautifully that any home cook can figure out some of these amazing recipes. My other favorite cookbook would have to be the Amish Cook at Home. I just love so many of the recipes in here. They're amazing. This book has stories in it from the author, um, and it goes by season, which I love. So that's definitely another favorite of mine. I have an entire collection of cookbooks. I've shown them already. I'll put that link in the video somewhere, as of the other links, or it's also listed below. But there's so many good ones. You just need to go into your bookstore and look around. You're going to find so many books. I read cookbooks like regular books um, so many times. And I just absolutely adore this book right here, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. It's amazing. Okay, so how do you clean your oven? Um, self-clean does it, and I just wipe it out. I'm not going to get in my oven and scrub, scrub, scrub. It's just yeah, not happening. Um, I just don't see the point. Self-clean does make it warmer in your house, so it's nice to do it on those cooler days. And if you're doing it on a hot day, I highly suggest either cranking your air down, which, you know, is okay, or just dealing with it, doing it early in the morning and raising up the window. Sometimes it will get a little smoky, especially if you have any kind of food or substance in the bottom. The self-clean is going to basically turn everything into the oven ash. I leave in the racks because it also cleans those. And then once it cools down, it unlocks and you can wash out the, uh, the oven with a rag and get out like the ashes. Works amazing. Um, that's what I do. I love your red kettle. Where did you find it? So this is the one they're talking about. And um, this is a Hamilton Beach. I found it um, online. Again, if you're interested in buying this, I will put the link in my blog post. But this is amazing, you guys. So many houses in Europe have these, but not so many here in the United States. And this kettle heats up like in one minute. It's perfect for like ramen noodles, tea, even instant coffee, um, oatmeal. It just works beautifully. And I just bought my mom one for her birthday. I'll probably buy my sister one for her birthday too because I know um, that she probably want one. So um, I think I found it at walmart.com, but again, that link will be on my blog post. Do you have any dog or cat food recipes? I already posted a recipe for a birthday cake for the cats, but I know some people's cats are so finicky that they won't eat it. I got that. I'm sorry if that's the case and you made them. At least you made the effort. Um, I think three, two or three of my cats ate those and a couple other ones didn't. But... Um, do I have recipes? I'm sorry, I just went blank. Yes, and I haven't shared, I don't think, any of the dog food recipes, so I, I think I'll do some and show you. Most of the time, we go ahead and buy Trooper's dog food. He's been eating Happy Hips, and I'm, I'll show you some of the different meals we make for him um, periodically, so I'll show you. Just stay tuned. Um, how do you keep cat, this is like a group question, dual, dual, your question. How do you keep cat hair and dog hair out of the kitchen? Um, well, it's not completely cat and dog hair free, but my kitchen is big. So back here in this area is the cooking area. I'm at the island right now. And where the camera is set up right now, back is where we eat. And then on past that is the open um, living room. So what I do is keep my pets from crossing right here. At the island, they're not supposed to come back. Now cats, they are going to sometimes sneak in, and I know that's the case, but I run them out. The dog doesn't come back here at all. And 
My cats have ate off of the breakfast table for years. We're retraining them not to get up there and do that no more because they just mess up the table. It just is clean and then one, Gabby gets up there and eats and drops her food and it's a mess. Um, but I feed the cats and the dog that direction and um, I don't let them on the counters at all. If one of my cats gets on a counter, um, I'll either yell at it or I'll spray it with a water bottle and after doing that a few times they just don't even bother. Um, sometimes though if there's fresh flowers, which there are a few, Romeo will try to jump up there and eat them. But for the most part the, the kitchen is animal free. What are the most common mistakes you've seen happen in the kitchen? So I made a list and this is the last part of the video. Hopefully it's not too lengthy. So these are the things that I thought about and came up with um, that I know is not only with family, but with friends and people who ask me questions quite a bit about cooking. These are the things I come up with. So for so many people, they never taste their food as they go. They throw like pasta sauce in the skillet and um, you know, maybe throw some seasonings in, make their pasta, put it together, and never taste things as they go. I think that's huge. You need to taste as you go so you can season better and you can see if it needs a little more of this or a little less of that. So always taste as you go. Another thing is not reading like the recipes in full before you start. You should definitely always read through that recipe once, twice, maybe three times um, before attempting to make it so you really absorb the steps in your head. You might not remember them all, um, but you will read it and process it and realize if you need a certain tool or if you need a certain size pan. Um, read that recipe through because so many people really do not. Another thing I've noticed is most people like to cook on high. Um, so many of my friends do this. They just turn that stove on high, put the skillet on, and cook the food um, at that temperature. I had one friend um, a few years ago say, how does your bacon turn out so good? Mine's always overdone. Turn the heat down. Um, you don't have to cook every single thing on high. I promise it's not going to take that much longer. Your food's not going to be as tough because when you cook really high, sometimes the food turns out kind of tough or burnt. Um, so watch the temperature on your stove. It's very important. Um, a lot of times I'll start baking on high um, just to get it cooking you know, really well, and then I will turn it back a little bit. You do not have to cook every single thing on high. Not necessary. Another one kind of in conjunction to that is not really knowing your oven well. I, I know that sounds weird, but you should buy one of those little thermometers um, for, and we had one, but um, I cleaned the oven with it in there and it went haywire. But Buy a little thermometer from Walmart. I'll put that link in my blog uh, post for you guys. But buy one of those. You can find them anywhere. And put it in your oven and set your oven to 350. See if that thermometer lands on 350 or if it's cooking too hot or cooking too low. It's very easy to tell. And if you leave that little thermometer in, even if it says it's preheated to 350, it might not be. It might be preheated to 400. It might be preheated to 300 or 325. Know your oven, which is a very common mistake for so many people. Um, another thing is crowding the pan. When you put a ton of food into a skillet, what it does is basically steams the food but doesn't brown it. So don't overcrowd your pan. Give things plenty of room to move around. Um, another thing is turning food too soon. So if you say even with the cast iron, if you put your chicken breast in the cast iron skillet and you go to turn it and it sticks, that doesn't mean you know that you've done anything wrong. It means that the chicken is not cooked enough to loosen up from the pan. Give it a couple more minutes and then flip it. Here's a real good one. Not using a meat thermometer. Now my meat thermometer 
just stuck over here. This is a super nice one. This is a holder meat thermometer. It's digital. You can buy very inexpensive ones. I'll have the link on my blog. Very inexpensive ones or more expensive, kind of like this one. And it's going to change your life, especially if you have never used one before. It will tell you when that steak is medium rare or well done or the chicken is at the right point because who wants raw chicken? And so many people make that mistake. Um, a meat thermometer is a lifesaver. Every kitchen should have one. If you're a beginner, definitely get one. And even a more seasoned cook should still have a meat thermometer in their kitchen. Another thing is when you take your meat off the grill or out of the oven, a lot of people just go right into it, start slicing it up, juices run everywhere not good. It doesn't hurt to take an extra five or six minutes, tint that meat item um, that you have, put some aluminum foil over it. I like to use parchment paper and then aluminum foil and kind of seal it up and let it rest for five or six minutes. When you go back and slice into it, um, it's, the juices are going to be inside the meat instead of all over the plate. So let your meat rest a little bit. Um, another one is trying to cook frozen food. I mean, I know that's silly, you know, for me to say, but so many people will take out like a chicken breast out of the freezer, pop it on the grill a few minutes and get good color on the outside and then cut it open. Again, it's pink, it's rare, it's disgusting. That's where a meat thermometer would come in handy, but you really need to thaw everything out all the way before cooking it. This is a good one. You don't, and this kind of goes hand in hand with what I just said. You don't want to take the meat straight from the freezer and put it, even if it's thawed out or the refrigerator, um, and put it on the grill. It will seize up if it's really cold and be tough. Leave it out. Let it sit out and come to room temperature if you have the time. And it will make everything so, so much better. Um, lumpy gravy. I've had a ton of questions over the years over lumpy gravy, what I suggest is using a whisk and making sure that you can use a pan with a whisk um, for that pan, like a metal whisk would be fine in here. But on these Teflon skillets by Rachel Gray, um, using metal will only tear this up. Get a plastic whisk, but they never work as well um, as metal ones. But make sure that you use a whisk and you won't have lumpy gravy. how to take care of kitchen herbs. So my kitchen herbs, I'll kind of pan the camera for you, are right there in my kitchen window. And I will do a whole video on those, but it's real simple. Sunlight and water and sometimes fertilizing them works perfectly. Um, but I do plan on doing a video because there's so many things I want to show you about kitchen herbs. So that is about it. I hope this video was helpful and not too long. I did my best to try to answer as many of the questions as I could. If I missed your question, leave it below or send me an email or leave it on my Facebook fan page, which is also linked below. How many times am I going to say that? Um, and you will um, maybe get your question answered in the next video. Um, we will do another question and answer. I'm not sure it's going to be right off on the kitchen again, but I will let you know um, next month what we're going to be doing question and answer about. So thank you for watching. I hope you've gotten some tips out of this video and um, any comments or thoughts, please leave them below. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new videos and check out my blog when you have time. I post free samples, tons of different things on that blog, such as, like I said, free samples and um, link ups and coupon deals and just life stuff that kind of coordinates with this channel and my other channel. So thanks again. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.